It's Tim Sheets of a TechSpot here, and this is the Motorola Moto E, the company's entry-level device that will set you back just 130 US dollars. It comes with a 4.3-inch QHD display, a Snapdragon 200 SoC inside, 4 gigabytes of internal storage, 1 gigabyte of RAM, and on the back, a 5 megapixel fixed focus camera. The Moto E is a fairly unassuming device. It falls well within what we normally see on entry-level smartphones, although with a bit more polish than we're used to. It's not exactly the slimmest device, coming in at over 10 millimeters thick, but it is quite curved, as you can see around the edges here. The device fits quite comfortably in the palm of your hand for general usage, and the power button, which is found on the top right-hand edge, is quite easy to press and is in generally the perfect position for using this device. Also helping out the ergonomics of the Moto E, apart from the generally curved back panel, is this small dimple with the Motorola logo in it. I was told by a Motorola executive that this dimple is designed for your index finger to be placed during general usage to stop the device from slipping around. And generally speaking, it does a fairly good job of keeping the device firmly positioned in your hands during usage. The removable back panel also makes use of soft touch plastic, which feels very nice in your hands. It's definitely better than some of the glossy smooth plastic that we've seen on Samsung devices in the past. It does keep fingerprints somewhat if you have particularly greasy hands, but generally speaking, it feels quite nice and is one of the better plastic materials that I've seen. The back panel itself though is quite tough to get off. It requires quite a bit of force as you can see here to open up that back panel, but when you do take the back panel off, you'll notice here that there is no removable battery. The internal just under 2000 milliamp hour battery is sealed within the device, although you can see here that the battery actually pops out on either side. Unfortunately though, you still can't remove it. On the right hand side here, you'll notice there are three ports, which is the main reason why you can remove this back panel. There are two SIM card slots, this being a dual SIM device, as well as the micro SD card slot for expanding on the fairly limited four gigabytes of internal storage. If you plan on using this device for storing photos and music, I'd highly recommend chucking in a cheap SD card from Amazon into that slot because four gigabytes can be filled up quite quickly by apps. As you can see on the front of the device, there are two metal strips above and below the display. The top one is the in-call speaker next to which you can find the sensor array and there's also a notification LED along there. And at the bottom is the main speaker that is used for playing music and ringtones. Unfortunately, unlike HTC devices where you'll see both speakers being used simultaneously, only the bottom speaker is ever used if you're trying to play back music and the top speaker, of course, for in-calls. So there is no dual speaker effect, no stereo sound coming out of this particular device, unfortunately. The QHD display on the Moto E is actually fairly good, even though it doesn't pack the latest hardware. We're talking about a resolution of 960 by 540, which is a little bit better than the HVGA and WVGA that we're usually used to on devices that are sub $150. The clarity is quite good. Obviously, it, you're not going to get as good sharpness as you would from a high-end panel, but this is a very acceptable resolution for an entry-level device, certainly punching above other devices like the Nokia Lumia 520, for example, which still uses an 800 by 480 display. In terms of the color quality of the display, we're looking at what is likely a cheap-ish IPS display. The viewing angles, as you can see there, aren't terrible, which indicates to me that it's not a TN panel, but the colors are actually quite good in what it can display at full brightness, as you can see here. It's quite a vibrant little display for 4.3 inches and on an entry-level device, so I think a lot of people will be very happy with what Motorola has produced here. Unfortunately, the one thing to notice though is that black levels aren't too great, which does reduce contrast somewhat. But I think most people will find that that is a welcome trade-off compared to the other aspects of this display that are quite good. I was particularly impressed with the performance of the Moto E for just $130. Inside, you'll find a Qualcomm Snapdragon 200 SoC, which isn't exactly the highest end chip. In fact, it is the lowest end chip manufactured by Qualcomm. And it comes with, as you can see here, a 1.2 gigahertz ARM Cortex-A7 dual-core CPU and the Adreno 302 GPU. Unfortunately, CPU-Z is a little bit wrong there. You'll also see one gigabyte of RAM inside this device, which makes it 
quite a capable performer. I'm not going to say it has performance equal to flagship devices, of course, you'll find that the operating system on a flagship will render a little bit more smoothly, closer to 60 frames per second than the Moto E, but this is a very capable device for general entry-level tasks and basic smartphone usage. Around the operating system, the Moto E is quite capable and smooth to use. Unfortunately, I did notice some stutter at times when returning to the home screen from loading applications. But typically, I think you'll find that the performance is quite good from the Snapdragon 200. Definitely more than what you might have been expecting for $130 because products at this price point are typically associated with lag and terrible performance, but that's not what you're gonna get with the Moto E. Performance loading applications that you haven't used in a while is definitely at the entry level side of the spectrum, meaning that this isn't going to be a multitasking powerhouse. You notice here that when we browse to some of the applications we've used previously that sometimes they load quickly, as you can see here browsing TechSpot in Chrome, but sometimes if you browse to something that was used quite a while ago, that there's a little bit of lag opening up the application as you saw there. There was a short delay as it tried to load the Twitter application there. So be wary that it's not gonna be the best device for multitasking, but I think the experience for an entry-level device wanting to provide basic smartphone functionality, this device is quite capable. And it's also very capable in gaming as well. The Adreno 302 only has to render to a QHD display, meaning that you'll be able to run most of your favorite Android games on this device with no problems. So as I've been going through this review, you'll probably have noticed that this device is running completely stock Android. A vanilla Android experience is provided without any bloatware, without any additions. This is as Google intended it, and pretty much the same as you would find on the Google Nexus 5. This means that everything that you were expecting on Android 4.4 is included on the Moto E, provided that this device can actually run it from a hardware standpoint. So we've got the standard settings screen here with most of the features that you've been accustomed to. If you want to check out my full review of Android 4.4, head back to the Google Nexus 5 review I did where I did a little bit of a deeper look into the software from Android 4.4. That said, there are two main additions that I want to cover on the Moto E. These are included as standalone applications included out of the box so you don't have to download these. And of course, this is exclusive to Motorola devices. The first app is Assist. And if you're familiar with the Moto G, you would have seen this application already. It's also very similar to Smart Actions that was included on some previous Motorola devices. In this application, you can set certain triggers which allow the smartphone to automatically control certain things. For example, when you're sleeping, you can set a certain time for your device to be completely silenced so that you're not annoyed with notifications during the night. Another one, meeting mode, allows you to set your, again, phone to silent mode when you're in a meeting as detected by Google Calendar. Unfortunately, these are the only two things you can do in this version of Assist. Some of the more advanced features are locked to the Moto X and Motorola's other high-end devices. An even better app than Assist included on the Moto E is called Alert. And the basic idea of this app is that you set an emergency contact or contacts that can be contacted instantly through the pressing of the emergency button. What it does when you press the emergency button is it starts notifying your contacts through both text message with your included location, as well as through a phone call, allowing you in an emergency, you just have to tap one button and a whole ton of information is sent. You can also set that to call emergency services as well as sending your notification to some of your contacts if you want to do that. Alert has a few other functions because understandably you're not gonna be in an emergency situation all the time. Meet Me will send a text message to a contact with your location automatically in it. And Follow Me does pretty much the same thing as Meet Me, except it sends those text messages at a certain interval, allowing someone that you're trying to meet up with know exactly where you are as say you move around a shopping center. The final feature in Alert is gonna be particularly handy for parents. In this feature, you can set up certain locations that when you enter and exit these locations, a text message is sent to an emergency contact or a family member just to let you know that you've safely entered or exited these locations. For example, if your kid is going to school, you might wanna set up a place for their school so that when they enter school, you know that they've arrived safely at school and once they leave and they've gotten home, you can set another trigger. It sends a text message to you at work, to know that they've arrived safely. Fantastic feature for certain situations. So the final feature I wanna discuss on the Moto E is of course the rear facing camera. It's a five megapixel sensor with a 2.4 lens attached. Unfortunately though, it is fixed focus. So while you do get the same sensor as found in the Moto G, 
it's not particularly useful in a number of circumstances. The easiest way to illustrate the downside of a fixed focus lens is by going into the camera application. Now any item that is around a meter to maybe a meter and a half away from the smartphone will be perfectly in focus because that is where the fixed focus camera is designed to be. However, something 10 centimeters or 20 centimeters away from the lens is always gonna be out of focus, meaning that this device is completely useless for macro photography. If you're trying to take a photo of a flower or food, you'll find that the Moto E is simply not capable of taking this shot because it can't focus in close enough. That said, I think it's easy to overlook the issues with the Moto E's camera from a number of standpoints. First of all, this device is just $130, making it fantastic value for money. You get a really solid design that is comfortable and made with decent materials. You get an excellent QHD display for the price point. Of course, we're not talking about any flagship hardware in this device, but the display on this definitely punches above its weight. We've also got the Snapdragon 200 SoC inside. Not a performance powerhouse, but it does a decent job at powering the Moto E. Finally, stock Android 4.4 is always a blessing, and some of Motorola's software inclusions like Assist and Alert are generally quite good. Overall, if you're after an entry-level Android smartphone or just an entry-level device overall, the Moto E is definitely one of the better devices on the market today. And that's it for this review of the Motorola Moto E. If you want to check out any performance benchmarks, battery life figures and more cool stuff, check out the full written review which you can find on TechSpot. Com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel for more video reviews coming in the future. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and Google Plus for the latest in news and analysis. Thanks, guys. This has been a TechSpot video review.